All right, it is a new day and uh, got some really cool stuff going on. Uh, the big thing here is one chat. I, I've been working on this. I spent I don't, I don't want to tell you how long time I spent getting like some opaque chat up there. <laughs> it was driving me crazy from the last stream. Got to fix that. So first thing up, YouTube, Twitch, living together in harmony and chat. That's what I really wanted. And then I think we I think we got that. I think we we got it uh perfect. So that's first order of business. Second order of business. I'm going to make some people angry on this stream and I apologize ahead of time. Because today we're going to be doing a little bit of uh exploration in Linux and not the kind of exploration that Linux users like. C# .net terminal in Linux. I know, I just made a bunch of Linux users throw up and probably break their screen somewhere, but I kind of want to look at it <laughs> and just see, hey, what is this? What does this feel like? It's kind of a crazy scenario. Now, obviously, obviously, it's more for science kind of experiment that we're doing here, but it's actually doable. It's kind of crazy, and I want to just kind of share my progress. I was working into the wee hours last night, and I was just like, hmm, C -sharp .net Linux. What is wrong with me? Why am I like this? And then I thought, think of the views, Chris. Let's do it. <laughs> so uh, that's uh, what we're going to look at. And then also, I want to look at Go, specifically Go with Bubble Tea for uh, terminal menus. Uh, and I kind of want to show you all the different things because we've been using Rust and I don't like Rust. I know I'm a noob. I just, it, when it comes to programming, I know nothing, but I don't know. There were some problems with the Rust UI and LinUtil and I'm just not sold that's where we want to go. So Linux utility for sure today. Uh, but really, more of the menu aspect, I kind of want to do some more exploration as this project gets away, you know, on its way. Uh, man, I, I don't know if I can agree with like tech bros out there about the whole Rust being the, the future. I look at it and I'm like, eh, it's okay. I mean, from my caveman knowledge of programming, I just, I look at it and I'm like, it's not really for me and it doesn't jive with my, my it doesn't make me feel good <laughs> that's the best i can give you <laughs> from a noob perspective it's it's okay in cargo and that and i don't know the the nodes and, and i i just ah, i look at it and i'm just like ah, i'm just not sold and uh Something in me is just is like, C is kind of nice. And I could just do it in regular C, but then I was like, well, I've already kind of know a little C sharp. And then .NET is uh, completely agnostic. Uh, let's explore that because no one in their right mind would ever do that. So that's kind of why uh, what we got. Can you show me the problems with the Rust TUI? Just curious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's, let's just launch and show you what I have right now. Uh, and then will go into it because that's the big thing. Like what is the big issue with the LinUtil right now? So right now we've written in Rust and you might notice there is two branches now. Again, sometimes I like to do things off stream, especially when I'm like trying something for the first time because it might just be completely awful. You might notice the C-sharp branch. I've gone ahead and guess what? It works. Anyways, uh, we'll come back to that. And this is our basic one. Right now we've done like a cargo build and we have a binary file called linutil. Now the big problem that I'm having with linutil is let's just go into, dude, what do we have? Do we, I thought we've uh, already cloned this. Let's just go into our GitHub linutil. Yeah. All right, uh, let's do a git pull. Just make sure we're all up to date. Uh, we do have a new branch. Uh, that's all that was updated. But if we go like linutil, like this, and then let's say we're setting up NeoVim, right? So we're going to hit that. We do get an application. Or actually, that one was successful. Okay. Let's set up bash prompt. Let's see what do we get. 
Oh, this actually works for me because of how I set up. Oh, wait, no, no, you still see it. There's no interaction with the nested prompt. And if there is an elevation request for sudo, uh, from sudo, it, you can't type it in. So the, I, I have no, uh, no uh, way to interact with the terminal. So that's kind of like the big thing with Rust right now. That's the, the big issue. So uh, what I've done, just, just to kind of show this, this actually, I got these mixed up. This actually should be on Workspace 2. And then if we go to Workspace 2, or let's go Workspace 1. Let's go back to Lin Util. And we're this we're gonna do a switch. Uh actually let's do git switch C sharp. We're gonna switch to the C sharp branch. So this do I have .NET installed? I do have .NET installed. I installed .NET in Linux. You can throw tomatoes at me now. I'm totally okay with that. I would throw tomatoes at me too. So this is kind of an interesting um different branch different language we'll make a new branch for go and bubble t2 just to mess around just to see what they all are i kind of want to just dip my toe in a little bit of couple different languages to see which one feels good in the end if i had to like get this out tomorrow and i was like under the gun and someone has had a gun to my head and said chris we have to have a functional linux utility today i'd be like all right bash script with whip tail it is it's gonna be ugly but It'll get the job done. So I totally could could do that. But I want to show you something else I've run on to. So we can do a .NET run. Uh, oh, I need to install it first over here. Let's go paru s .NET. Is there a .NET in, in old uh, Arch? We got .NET runtime, dash runtime is what we want. Uh, we're, I think we can go with just .NET 8, that's fine. Dang, .NET's up to eight now. Damn. Okay. <laughs> uh, and in case you're wondering, you can actually, I know this is, a, I'm just entertaining the idea. I know this is wrong, but you can actually do a self-contained thing and make like a, a C-sharp .NET binary with everything self-contained. So the person doesn't have to have .NET installed, which is quite crazy. <laughs> Viz, thanks for the Twitch Prime. I gotta say though, this right here, I'm I'm killing it with the, the chat. I love the multi-chat with the different badges and uh the, the mixture of YouTube with Twitch. I did good there. Now let's uh, now that I've said I've I've given myself a compliment. Now you now you can make fun of me for this because this is actually pretty terrible. <laughs> All right, let's install some .NET 8 in our Linux install. Uh, switch from YouTube chat just today. All right, Viz. Yeah, uh, YouTube's fine. Like, I, I still like watching streams, like people that dual stream. I still like watching them on YouTube and then using just Chatterino to chat. I still love that. But yeah, there's no doubt. IRC chat is just so much better than whatever janky chat YouTube's rocking right now. Oh, uh, let's go. All right, so now we've installed .NET. Let's try .NET run. Uh, we'll probably have to quit. Let's relaunch our terminal. Linutil. .NET run. No. .NET? What are the options here? I thought you could just do like maybe .NET build. Let's try that. Build does not exist. What in the world is going on here? Oh. John, thanks for the Twitch. Which prime? Oh, and also loop five months. All right, man. Oh, this is so much fun though. I, I I will say building building stuff is just so much fun. I am just completely addicted. I'm terrible at this, but it's just so much fun. On my Debian system, I was just messing around with this yesterday. I was my laptop though. So why is .NET not working? I guess we could just download it direct, but I still don't understand. Did I grab the wrong library? Um, oh, I need the SDK, .NET SDK. That's what I, I, I just got the runtime. That's what I, okay. That's what the deal is. I was like, what the, what, what, what is happening? Uh, control shift E, control shift E, come on. There we go. Yes. RG, thanks for the Twitch Prime. Man, a lot of, a lot of new folks popping into chat too today. I am absolutely loving that. All right, so now let's see if we have .NET run. Oh, okay. We're, we're making progress here. 
uh, install asps.net. <laughs> this feels dirty. Feels dirty. Does it, it feels a bit wrong doing this on Linux? I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know something about it. Just makes me go okay. An issue occurred verifying workloads. Dot net workload update. All right. I don't know what this is. I don't understand the workload. I do understand how to read though, and reading is half the battle. <laughs> Dot net run. No projects exist. Dot net run. Let's go to the source directory. Maybe. All right, here we go. Here we go. This is my new Linutil using C Sharp and .NET libraries in Linux, right? I'm, I'm taking us back to DOS. We're, we're importing DOS in Linux. <laughs> ah, all right, so you saw the bash prompt fail in our Rust deal. So if we go click it here, what happens when we go to install here? Uh, definitely some issues with the display, but I don't, I just see a couple warnings. Nothing necessarily is failing. I think got to add ASCII now. Yeah. Don't tempt me. Don't tempt me. I'm going to take us back to the eighties. If you give me enough time. Uh, so I think this completed it's not a very big script let's let's just do was that neovim or was that i think that was just the bash setup so let's let's set up neovim let's see what that looks like ah see it didn't didn't do anything there oh i guess it did oh no i broke my prompt okay well that was fun ah all right well hmm it kind of worked <laughs> Let me let me pull it in to a code editor and we're going to take a peek at old dot net because this is kind of an interesting one. Uh, hey, you know, don't tell me the DeLoreans are actually making a comeback here. They're making a comeback. So I I would I would totally sport a DeLorean. I I hate new cars like new cars with like the stupid lights and the buzzing when you, you drift lanes a little bit. And I don't know the push button called me old fashioned, but just give me a key, a combustion engine and send me on my way. I'm totally okay with that. I, I don't know. I, again, having one of them old man yells at cloud moments. Sometimes I just like older stuff. <laughs> Embrace. Thanks for the Twitch prime. <laughs> Isn't it 88 miles an hour that you got to hit for back to the future to, to get in the, the time leap? Yeah. You know, it's one of those things. Um, so let's fix our bash prompt again. I thought I had my bash in here. Did I not? Uh, you know what? I bet you it's in Linux toolbox. Yeah. Yeah. There's my bash. So here's, here's my bash. Let's go set up here. This is how it should look when it's run from just a regular bash prompt. So let's see, let's make sure it's actually setting up properly, I guess, <laughs> before we go too, too crazy with like C sharp or rust or whatever we go on today. It does Lorian does like to even do 80. I don't know. I know it's definitely towards the upper end of its threshold. The DeLorean was actually a pretty terrible car when it comes to performance, but the stainless steel and just kind of the design aspects of it were so ahead of its time. So, <laughs> uh, you know, you, the Cybertruck took a lot of notes from the DeLorean. It's like, let's go. What is .NET again? Matt KC. <laughs> Yeah, Matt KC actually imported .NET libraries into, I think it was Windows 98, which was nuts. Because .NET, I think it was a 2001 iteration from Microsoft. And what Matt KC did was just absolute insanity. The guy is a, just a mad lad, just crazy. But what a Chad for doing that. <laughs> we, I think he spent six months of his life to make that YouTube video where he imported .NET into Windows 98 insane absolutely insanity but cool i'm i'm so cool i think he tried 95 to start out with and then he moved to 98 oh no no it was 95 he said 98 was actually relatively simple and i think that only took him a couple weeks but he was like i really want it on 95 so he backported all the way from even 98 to 95 uh where official support began i think during the windows 2000 and Windows XP era. Alrighty. 
Man, my my DKMS modules do take a long time to build. Yeah, my laptop's my main. Uh, it's not my daily driver for the studio. Uh, I still have like the Xeon processor here. So for the studio, when I'm like building things, I I just like to have pure speed. Uh, but when I'm like at my work or I'm in bed, I'm using that 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 laptop I showed is gonna be my daily driver for probably the next year or two couple years usually i'll do like a linux laptop review from from one of the linux laptop manufacturers and then uh just hang out i, I get a lot of stuff that would people would send to me but a lot of times i'm like i just don't want to make that video but linux laptops are always something i love tinkering with because it's always interesting to see what other people do with linux oh look at that kernel jump we're going all the way to 6.9 nice okay so if we did that right let's see if the actual script did that work hmm did i just break my system <laughs> crap uh let's launch console i guess okay console's still going all right let's let's do an syu why we're here why we're in arch let's just let's just uh push it to the limits right cluso Thanks for the resub. Which prime for three months? All right. Ooh. I think I'm I'm just gonna become a, a streamer now. I'm just gonna stream all my stuff and I'm just gonna try and build as much things as I possibly can going forward. <laughs> it's so much fun. I am just having a ball doing this and just exploring. That and I, I, I like the fact that you everyone can see the work that goes behind like a video that comes out. So you can actually just see. I think too often people watch a YouTube video and go, this should take me 10 minutes to do. And they don't see like the three hours that you sit there and just like smash your head against a wall. And that's the thing I love about the streams is you actually get to see all the work that goes into that before you hit the like, let's record a video kind of kind of method. That's what I also love about these. That and I think it makes the video better because I get instant feedback from everybody going, hey, you should do this, Titus. When I was making the Rust thing, I was expecting the input would not be necessary. I would expect you to do a no confirm flag for everything. P please explain. So when you run the binary file, it will have to elevate. And when you elevate, input will be needed. So that's the big issue. Uh, and when it comes to like whether we're using C sharp, Rust, Go, uh, or even just ba straight, straight bash. Uh, there will be an elevation prompt and also user input will be needed for certain projects. Uh, another instance where user input will be needed for this Linux utility is during the setup of the bash script that I hopefully I don't break my system with what I'm doing right here. But with the setup of the bash script, there will be interaction with Starship. And eventually we might build out to where the user can pick their own theme because some people will be like titus i don't know what your obsession is with meslio lgs uh or the fact you like the blue color theme or nord i want to choose cat Puchin or dracula because i'm don't like your style and i'm like all right well you, know, you do you and i would like that option so there will be more interaction with a lot of these scripts and we will have to accommodate that. And really, we'll jump around on languages until we find something that feels good with that accommodation. Will C Sharp be it? Probably not. Will Rust be it? Maybe. Or will Go be it? You know, Go does have Bubble T, which I think is pretty much the de facto standard. I, I, If I was a betting man, maybe Go. I don't know. I don't know. Well, like I said, we'll see. Like, we're going to just create branches for each one of these languages so we can just tinker around and see what this is. Yeah, TUI's terminal inter uh, user interface. Yeah, and, and it's just a, a lot of this, too. It's not about how fast we build this project. This project will take a long time, years, years before it's more mainstream. The... I would say probably months before even advanced users can really get a lot of benefit from it. 
And that's just the nature of it. You just got to not be in a hurry. And that's the thing is I could be in a hurry. I have methods to get this done quickly, but I'm not going to utilize that because I want to take this time to try and build out different things and explore different methods and just learn it, why we do this. That's that's the big thing here is I want to learn more about the different languages and have fun doing that and say, oh, hey, is this working good? Or is this not working good? And and going through that. Oh, I should update my uh, to do on the stream here. Let's go notes. Today we are going uh, Lin X um, shell menus and then also Linux utility or, or maybe let's call it toolbox. I feel like toolbox is more applicable. The other thing I was talking, uh, thinking about on the Linux utility as I was kind of spitballing at work uh, yesterday, do I really want to break up the different pieces into different repos? That's another thing where I'm like, mm, I don't know. I don't know. That's another one where I'm like, maybe. Yeah, I still have a day job. Um, that's why I don't really do sponsors because I hate sponsors. I would rather go to a nine to five than have to go back and forth between a company. And if you're if you're unfamiliar with like the back end of being a YouTuber or even a streamer, really, that streamers work the same way, probably more so in the streaming realm. But to make money in the hundred to a million subscriber range, like full time revenue to leave like a nine to five, you need to do sponsor spots. So you'd be like, this video is brought to you by Incognito or Nord VPN or Squarespace or, you know, all the crap. Those 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 companies that uh, have mediocre products, but not necessarily bad product. Eh, actually, Incogni is kind of a straight up scam. Uh, hmm. So is BetterHelp. Oh, God. Yeah, they're terrible. Uh, I would rather I would rather quit and go back to work full time than have that sponsor. Anyways. Some bad sponsors in, in to really make it a full-time deal, you can't really be that picky. There's only like 10 to 20 sponsors that are going to come out and say, hey, we're going to give you some money. We need to put like a 30 second to 60 second ad spot in your video. And I hate that work. Just straight up. I just absolutely despise ad spots. Not, not that I despise other YouTubers that do it. Good for them that they're doing that. Uh, they got a, they need their bag, and I, I enjoy their content, so I don't mind sitting through one. It's not that. It's the fact that I just hate the work. That, I would rather go fix a server. I'd rather sit there and go sit in an IT closet for eight hours than to do one ad spot. Just real talk. <laughs> so, yeah. Do you prefer Paru over EA? I really don't care. Either one. <laughs> Is Lunduke making a, a OS? Ah, uh, Lunduke computer operating system? Oh God. I'll definitely check it out whenever he, he makes it. But yeah, I'm not helping him with it. Oh God, an Opera GA, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, that's the big thing. All right, I think, we're, I think we're good. I think we've updated. Let's reboot this thing. Hopefully it comes back up, huh? Oh, oops. Oh, oh, right. Ooh, let's come back here. All right, let's reboot. Okay, I was about to say, do I need a pseudo reboot? <laughs> There's probably close. There's some good sponsors out there, Savior. Um, people I've enjoyed working with from a sponsor standpoint is when I can work directly with a company and I have like a technical liais liaison. So anytime I can speak to someone that actually knows something and they're not just like a marketing guy, I love that. So... Synology, I haven't done anything from Synology in years now, but I enjoyed that company and working with the people there because anytime I'd have an issue or I'm like, hey, I ran into this, let me go back and forth with it. I was able to do that. So I loved working with Synology. That was a good sponsor and they paid uh, quite a bit. I, geez, I, I don't think I, I might have signed seven where I can't disclose the amount, but it was it was it was nice. Let's just say they they were very easy to work with and they paid paid good. And there's another one in there. There's definitely another one. Oh, I you know I enjoyed 3CX. You know 3CX has been a good one too. I've been able to uh, do them and I've used them 
personally in business in a lot of other businesses for phone systems, business phone systems. So I, I've enjoyed 3CX. Uh, they've had some controversies in the past couple of years. So a little bit more on the, uh, I don't know if you want to sponsor them or not, but I still in, I still like them and, and their product, uh, even with the controversies they've had. Um, uh, other sponsors I've had on the channel that I've, uh, all the laptop ones, whether it's Tuxedo and K Focus, I've enjoyed uh, talking with those guys. They're they're really great. So uh, from a hardware perspective, I've I've talked and done stuff with both. Is this gonna come back up? Oh crap! Did I just break my system live on stream? Maybe 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 it just needs time to cook, like a long time. Rut row. All right. Well. Uh... This is broken. Wait, my Synology is going. Can we get like a TTY? Uh, oh, you know, some would say I deserve this. Some would say installing .NET on Linux, you reap what you sow. The Linux gods came by and they smited me. They said, Titus, what you're doing is blasphemy. You will be punished. For your transgressions fair enough oh crap <laughs> did i break it i absolutely did can we get to tty <laughs> hey. let's just uh pull out the keyboard here we're gonna just plug in real fast sometimes my fancy keyboard does not like it does not like the uh, console. All right. So, fine. Well, crap. All right. Uh, we, we, yeah, no, I turn off SSH on my studio PC. All right. Let's try TTY2. <laughs> All right, maybe TTY3. It's Control Alt F3, right? Yeah. Control Alt F3. Give me TTY4. Well, uh, that's not good at all. You know, let's just try the old reset button. I think that's, uh, hey, we're going to try that. One second. Yeah. Uh, come on. Reset. Where are you at? Uh, it's one of those uh, server systems, so we don't exactly have a reset easily. Okay. Yeah, uh, give, give it give it just a second here. We're, we're almost back up. Just a slight uh, detour. All right, here we go. Oh yeah, the magic uh, SysRQ key. You actually have to enable that day. And I don't think I enabled the magic SysRQ key, uh, sadly, on this system. Should have, but I did not. I also kind of blame my monitor too. I really need to get a better monitor. Can we, uh, are you gonna show anything? Nothing? No? Nothing? Just, uh, just, uh, Hmm. You know, it was only a matter of time with me going ham with the system updates on live on stream before something happened. Hmm. Parrot, thanks for the resub. Six months. Tier one. Man, what is up? Nothing good. Nothing good. Just uh, break an arch. You know, same day, different different issue do we have okay let's say we're back here tty3 come on give me something give me something all right here we go here we go let's let's uh i'm not reinstalling that's not happening we're not doing it come on give me something come on. all right we do have responsiveness it's just we have no display so what happened to my display the monitor is not turned on it is blinking though, so we got that. Jack, thanks for the Twitch Prime. Um, oh man, yeah, installing .NET. .NET on Linux is what happened. As soon as I did it, Linux was like, "You've betrayed me. You shall pay the consequences." All right. Uh, so Control. Uh, usually you can do Control Alt like F3, and then you get a TTY console. We should be on console right now. F4, F5, just just give me any TTY. Come on, just something. 
Just, just something. And yeah, we get nothing. We could try seven. Okay, so we're trying TTY seven. Control Alt F seven. Nothing. Okay. Control Alt F one. Nothing. So, uh, oh, oh, oh man. Oh, cool. So from here, I'm going to say we had a bad NVIDIA update since we don't have any video. However, I do know that my desktop is coming up in the background because Synergy is working. I can actually take my mouse and push it uh, over into my other one. So it's just the display that is problematic. What if, what if I take my display and bypass my switcher? Maybe my switcher's throwing throwing things through a loop. One second, one second. I got an idea. I got an idea. Yeah. Yeah. Brr. All right. Um. Uh, just take this. Oh no. That's not right. We're gonna just. Uh. Oh. Okay. Well. One second. More cables. We're just gonna take the cable here. One second. We're gonna bypass a few things. Oh no. What happened? <laughs> Milky raid. Uh, okay, for the Raiders that are just coming in, I decided to install C Sharp and .NET in Linux to do a terminal menu-based project, specifically for a Linux toolbox to build out a whole bunch of cool stuff for Linux. However, shortly after there, I decided to update Arch, and shenanigans have ensued. I think I broke my display driver. I don't know if I blame .NET for this, but we're going to blame .NET for this because everything was working. But then again, I did a live update on Arch right in the middle of the stream because I'm an idiot. All right. Well, anyways, that's a, you're up to date. Here we go. I'm going to try and get TTY going here. Should be good. Just need to recalibrate. One second. Almost there. And let's see. Give me some love. All right. We're bypassing the switcher. I'm hoping we can get TTY out of this. All right. All right. Here we go. So, beautiful. Now we're just going to come back. And then we're going to go Control-Alt-F3. Go to TTY3. And then we should be great. Oh, that was a, such a, such a, such a great time. All right. Let's go SysRQR. Well, ah, uh, yeah, ah, uh, that's, 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 that's good. Um, <laughs> oh, this, this is fantastic. I, I feel like we should go big Chris for this. Big Chris, you cannot measure my disappointment with, with what has happened. Anyways, let's go back to small Chris. Ah, uh, because, yeah. All right. So this time around, we're going to, we're going to come back in. We're going to hit grub. We're going to do a no mode set and see if we can't bypass the issue. I think it's a bad NVIDIA update through Arch. If I was a betting man, which I am, I feel like that would be good. Now, the TTY not showing up has me a little concerned. The fact I did the control alt F3 and we didn't get anything in TTY has me a little concerned. So... I'm hoping we can get my grub to show up. The other concern I have is my monitor is not showing anything. And that's not good. That is really not good. We do have snapshots. We do have backups. Yeah. 40 minutes in, breaks arch. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yep. Did you kick a cable maybe? No, we actually just replaced the cable because I thought maybe my switcher was interfering. Because right now we should see the grub screen on here, but we're not seeing it. Maybe uh, let me let me change the display, the desktop display. Maybe we can trick it into like a resolution. Um, let's go custom resolution, apply, and then maybe come back to it, and then go device default. So I feel like the at least the capture card should be showing something right now, but it's not. What a hot mess this was. But it's nothing. And I'm not getting any. Ah, <sighs> lordy. Feel like, hmm. Yeah, we don't have an iGPU. This is actually a Xeon uh, system. So uh, a really beefy system. Probably about a $10,000 uh, 
workstation. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Maybe I switch my monitor. Yeah, definitely an NVIDIA moment. If I was using AMD, would not be running into this, which is hilarious. I just talked up NVIDIA uh, quite a bit. <laughs> prior to this it's like nvidia is working great on arch i don't know what everybody's problem is uh but definitely the dkms is, is definitely a problem here uh and i have no display right now the display should be happening either on the capture card or here but i think it's defaulting to a 4k display on the capture card and it's not supported on my current monitor so i'm like i do have another monitor i could swap out to try and fix that we could also uh do a bunch of other stuff too on this blame whoever told you that was my mind i blame my mind that's what told me to do dot net um I, you know i'm this is this is what i get for it yeah so not even nothing showing up not even the bios uh maybe there was a bad bios update we could try let's try and get in just a bios let's see see that i think i think that's i think that's the play yeah, QMU on Windows is kind of terrible, Dad. Pretty bad. Yeah, we're UEFI. I, everything I do is UEFI these days. We could also live ISO to get it back. The big thing here is Grub should be showing right now. Before all this loads, we should be able to see Grub. And uh, the fact we don't even see that has me a little bit like, okay, maybe it's a display issue of some sort, but we should be seeing something. The fact we're not seeing anything specifically on my uh, capture card either tells me tells me we have some issues, <laughs> to say the least. Um, what if what if I bypass all the capture and then just go straight to Display Port instead of HDMI as well? Because I think that will probably display properly on my system, and I think I already have a display in there let's see yeah i already have a display in there so i think i can just plug that guy in i got an idea i got an idea okay one second all right so we're gonna we're gonna unplug the hdmi we're gonna plug in the display port and then we're gonna power off power back on force everything on the display port yeah well my bike picks things up and i have some compression going on so if it picks up a quiet vocal sound it should amplify that sound you lose some sound quality but it should work good display port is a lot better than hdmi the main issue with display port is well uh, i'd say the main issue with display port is it's hard to capture everything right now is built with hdmi capture in mind all right so i should see something on my screen and right now my monitor is still blinking i got nothing on my screen We've bypassed the display capture and God bless half this stream. She's going to be staring at a black screen. That's amazing. Oh yeah. It's just awful. Um, so we're not seeing anything on the screen here and we're pulling this directly in. Let me maybe, maybe it's, maybe it's only reading or picking up the HDMI. Okay. 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 Display port in. And then we'll just go enter. Now give me something. We do have a second video card for pass through. That could be an issue. CRT's none. I don't, I'm not a big uh, retro gamer in that regard. I'm a big on emulation, but I don't really care about actually owning the consoles. Okay, so this is actually displaying something on the display port, but it's just a black screen. So if I come into TTY, maybe? <laughs> Still got nothing. <laughs> there's not a chance i'm going to open season uh it's fun yeah we've already done the reset button a couple times uh we could change the monitor out um it's showing that it's grabbing some kind of display signal it's just not putting it up on the screen so let's uh let's power off again the thing that has me worried here guys is we should be seeing something from tty oh okay i think i i do see something on the shutdown process when I press the power button. So that's something. All right, now one more time. And then I'm gonna do a no mode set from Grub. I think I can see Grub now. Let's 
I'll just give you the play-by-play -play as we try and bring this system back up. I had to bypass the capture card because the capture card wasn't even showing the BIOS boot or the grub. So I want to see something on boot here. And right now I have just seen nothing but black screens the whole time. Put your camera on the monitor and then... Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call, good call. I got an idea on that. Oh, okay. We got something. One second. Okay. I got it. I got it. Let's go. Mm. <laughs> this I mean, it could work. It's going to be a weird angle. It's going to be a weird angle, but it's at least something. Let's see. Let's see if that gets me something. Okay. And now what we're going to do. Oh, man. Maybe? Okay. Here we go. Parrot cam. Shoulder of cam coming in. Okay. This is just such a terrible, terrible angle, guys, but... Oh, crap. Hold something too hard there. Wait, wait. All right. All right. Almost there. <laughs> well, all right. So we got that. We're going to go. <laughs> it's such a janky setup. But let's go advanced options. Let's go E for edit. And then in here, we're going to go to the Linux side of things. Yeah. I mean, can we fix the focus? I mean, it's such a weird angle. It's kind of like drifting. I don't think I, I don't have the, the, the length. You guys are just going to have to imagine what I'm typing, but I'll tell you too. So we'll go to the end here. We already have PCI disable. Let's go. No, no mode set. You can stare at my daily stoic journal. Goodbye grub. No mode set. Or is it no mod set? It's no mod set, right? It's slowly drifting off into the wall. Camera's falling. <laughs> it's such a curse stream. <laughs> no mode set. Okay. <laughs> it's no mode set. Uh, no mode set. All right. We're going to do that. And then we're going to click enter to boot. Uh, F10 to boot, actually. Uh, all right. Just stay right there, camera. Uh, man, I feel like the camera's going to fall. Anywho. You're going to know at least what I'm staring at, which is black dark screen <sighs> oh this keyboard right here is the oh can you see it on the screen anyways uh that's the digma defy if you want like a ortho linear i think it is um keyboard it's not bad black screen again um let's try control all f3 at least still a black screen Try Control Alt F7. C. Okay. Got nothing on Control Alt F7. Control Alt F3. F2. Just another black screen. I should have used the LTS kernel. GS, that would have been big brain thinking. And I think we do a revert. Let's see. Maybe there's a revert option in the kernel. Because the upgrade should have left the prior kernel. So let's, let's reboot and... The control F1 should give us like the boot, maybe. Wait, wait, wait. We got something. Come on, camera. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Just stay right there. All right. And oh no. That's just gonna droop everywhere, isn't it? And there, there. Now we're in. Whatever. All right. I think we got I got an idea. Let's try the different camera. We're, we're coming back up. You'll 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 be able to see kind of a little bit. I'll fix the camera later. At least you'll see something instead of just a black screen that says no signal. Or it might just be an out of focus picture of my wall. Um, if I see something on the screen, I, at least I can point the camera a little bit at it. <laughs> Need a headband camera sponsor. Agreed. Oh, see, we got we got uh, HP. No, no, can't see nothing there. It's gone. Goodbye, camera. You're just gonna you're just gonna fall. Whatever. Ah, aha. There's something on the screen. Let's go advanced options. We're going to try Arch Linux Linux kernel instead of... Oh, we were using Linux Zen. Oh, maybe it was an update to Linux again. Maybe Linux will work? No. Well, this stream is going to have to be renamed. I just broke everything. Titus breaks everything stream. It's just, it's all just, it's gone. Come stare at a black screen for an hour stream. You had to go back to 6.6 .6 instead of 6.9. Um, 
Yeah, well, let's choose a live ISO, I guess. And then we could try that. The life of a Linux user. Right here. Staring at a black screen. From a bad update on Arch. Well, that's okay. Let's do the live ISO. Chat's saying live ISO. We're going to go live ISO. Uh, maybe try Linux fallback. Funny story. Funny story. I disabled all the fallback. That wasn't that smart. Hindsight's 2020 on that one. I thought, well, fallback's just a waste of space. I'm just going to disable fallback kernels. Yeah. Good idea, though. Good idea. Most most Linux users would have a fallback kernel. Yeah, but I'm uh, not most Linux users, so. Unfortunate. Uh, all right, all right. Here we go. Here we go. This time around, what we're going to do is we're going to go into a live ISO, and then we're going to get that on the screen <laughs> well, we got a backup we got a backup so what i'm gonna do is on boot we're gonna get this and then i'm gonna quit it and then we should be able to go over into like a hdmi style one <sighs> all right I'm just got our startup menu we got a white screen uh we got a boot menu we're gonna go to boot and this time around oh this one and okay we do have an arch linux we did install arch linux we've been on arch linux for over four months now or three months it's like a world record for me um right now we're working on booting into the arch iso now i think what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and hook up the hdmi capture and get that displayed instead of the side of my monitor like you guys are seeing <laughs> and we'll go from there we can just see all the viewers on twitch it's just like this giant diving off a cliff from this broken um this break so man all right here we go i'm gonna try and switch back to hdmi now that we are on the iso now if we did that correctly uh oh oh it, it's broken oh no Oh no, what has happened? Ah! <laughs> ah! Oh no! Oh! Ah! <laughs> Come on! Oh no! No! Oh! Uh. Oh boy! Well, I'm gonna say there's some other problems going on here, guys. Uh, we're gonna have to shut this one down. It has been fun, but uh, it looks like the Windows machine is now protesting uh, that I installed .NET Linux and I made fun of it. So I appreciate everybody coming out for this absolute curse stream. And uh, yeah, we're I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to do this offline because I don't have an overhead camera, which I will remedy for the next stream this next time this happens you guys can watch me at least a little better instead uh enjoy this picture of me being uh pushed into the digital ether as i say goodbye i am glad you guys came out for this one hour live long stream where i completely broke my system and also broke my streaming pc as it now is non-functional and can no longer capture anything so to you all i say Pray for me. Love you all. Have a great one. And I'll stream again to make this one up because this was a complete disaster. So be looking for the next stream in the next day or two. I will have a Friday or Saturday stream once I have fixed the issue. Goodbye for now.